Hey guys, what's going on today? Bojo here back again for episode number 14 of our Montreal Canadiens franchise mode series here in NHL 19. So if you guys want to mind, make sure to go down to that like button down below. Make sure to hit it subscribe if you guys are brand new to the channel and the series. Also make sure to go check out into the am.com. Use code Bojo for 10% off your entire order. Alrighty, so welcome back to the series, guys. As you can see, I skipped over the resign phase because I wanted to get through that a little bit quickly because there are going to be a couple of things that I definitely want to get done, and I probably want to try to get some simulating done in this video in regards to our team. So I'll show you guys exactly what I did over the resign stage and what the contract situation is looking like on the team and who we actually ended up signing or didn't sign and uh, all that fun stuff as we move into free agency here in year number four. So as you guys can see though, Carey Price is still on the team currently, who knows for how much longer, but still at that 10.5 mil and Carter Hart is still going to be the backup. As for the in the system goaltenders, we brought back Legacy for one more year. McNivon, I only tenderfied a qualifying offer, so he did end up accepting that. Accepting that. Caden Primo is still on the squad, and then we also ended up going out and signing the goaltender prospect that we picked in this past draft in the third round, 66th overall, Oli Rajala. So I uh, signed the 17-year-old to a contract just to see, maybe get him a couple games in the preseason and see what he might be able to do with the team, but he'll more than likely be sitting on the bench in the AHL uh, as like the fourth goaltender on this uh, roster so he'll get some experience on the bench that's for sure but we ended up signing him as we go for defenseman Roman Yossi still at that seven mil contract Josh Morrissey I ended up signing him for a 5.3 million dollar contract for a good bit six years so almost the exact same length as the Roman Yossi deal so we'll have to see if that's going to be worth it if he's going to get an overall boost or not uh, Juleson, Mete, and Zaboral didn't need to be signed, so they're fine. Belfoy more than likely will be on this team this year 100%. We have to see exactly where he's going to be play going to be playing, though. And then uh, Frederick Clayson is going to be an extra defenseman. I think I need to just pick up one more extra depth defenseman for injuries. And then as we look in the system, Cal Flurry, Jelena, Pullman, Cedarholm, Romanov, and then Habby Bullen, Brook, uh, Outlaw, Bouchard, I signed the 17-year-old Lars Pedersen, who was our sixth overall pick in this past draft. A comment in the last video was saying that he gets good very, very quickly, so I didn't want to make any mistakes about that to sign him. So I'll see what his overall is. A lot of the low elite guys I left unsigned uh, just for the time being. I want to see how they perform in their junior years to see how good, uh, what kind of point totals they get before I end up signing them. But I think we're good for the AHL on defense. It's a little bit weaker than last year, but it still should be looking pretty nice in the system. And then obviously for our NHL team, it's looking good with Riosi and Morrissey up top. Hopefully Juleson, Mete, and Zaboro all get overall boosts. Same thing with Belfoy. And then uh, one more extra defenseman I need to sign in free agency to uh, get that, uh, you know, just as an extra add-on guy. As we go to the right wingers. Brendan Gallagher is back, the next to be named captain of this Montreal Canadiens team. I know you guys in the comment section have been asking me, who's the captain of this team? Who's the captain? I'm not really entirely sure who has been named captain on this team, but before the year starts, Brendan Gallagher will be wearing the C on his jersey. So we signed him to a $5.075 million contract for six more years. So you guys want him to stay a hab, and more than likely he is going to be staying as a hab. As he's going to be here for the next six years so hopefully he continues to put up that good point so might digress a little bit maybe in three years but he's still looking pretty good uh sherback army and seneschal still have one more year left on their contracts and then dylan cousins cousins however the heck you say it 77 overall currently hoping for a nice overall boost uh he'll be looking at either a depth role on the nhl team this year or maybe like a fourth line or third line role depending on what his overall is going to look like in the system, uh, McCarran and Ilanen are pretty good. Uh, Russ Muzzin will be unsigned. Slugobov will be unsigned. Elliot Holtz. I did end up signing a Blake Kovalchuk, though, the medium elite potential player in this past draft. Fourth round, one of seventh overall, two way forward. I only signed him because he's medium elite and he was an overager, so 20 years old. So I'm hoping that his overall is actually not half bad. We'll play him in the preseason and actually see exactly what kind of overall he's going to be looking at. And if he's decent, you know, he'll throw, he'll, he can play in the AHL right away. There's no uh, issues with that. He can play in the AHL right away. 
So um, hopefully he'll get some action down there if he's not NHL ready. Left wingers, we go to now. Max Domi still stayed the same. Yanni Gord was a bit of a hassle here. I signed him for how long? Three years or four years? Four years at 5.3. He definitely wanted to test free agency, but I would not let that happen. I want him to stay on my team for at least like maybe moving down to a third line role in this situation, but we'll see. He was a bit pricey. I have him on the trading block, so if there's any teams that are going to be interested in Yanni Gord uh, with, that comp, with that cap hit, so they can definitely let me know. Alexi, Alexis, however they like you say, Lafreniere, 78 overall, depth of uh, depth forward, will be hopefully on this team. He 100% is going to be on this team. I'm hoping for a good overall boost for him to play. Paul Byron's right there. Jacob De La Rose, same thing, kind of depth players. Again, in the system, I think for left wings, we're looking good. Lekkonen's moved down to the AHL. Poulin, we'll have to see. Reichel, uh, Reichel, where was, uh, oh, Paling is a center, I think, right? Uh, yeah, Paling's a center. I'll get to him in a minute, but... Yeah, uh, left wingers for in the system. I think they're looking good. The unsigning guys are Zarkov, Cloutier, and Holden for the time being. So they'll remain unsigned. And then, as I said, centers on the main roster. We only got three, but they're pretty simple. Jonathan Duran is back. Obviously, uh, Sparkock and Emmy, one more year left. And then I signed Charles Sudon for two years, two mil cap hit. Maybe to be a fourth line center on this team, which should work out fine. And then in the system, Paling making a shit ton of money down there in the AHL. 2.675 mil. He threatened to go to free agency, but once again, I'm not letting that happen. If I have to have you sitting down in the, in the AHL with a tremendous cap hit, I will, but he'll more than likely get moved up, so the cap hit won't be a terrible uh, situation. He'll probably get a decent overall boost, and uh, he should be able to make the fourth line of this team. Other than that, center-wise, for the AHL team, they're looking good. Gambardella, Vademo, Fonstad, Bitten, Olofsson, Hillis, Timur, uh, and Hillis are looking really, really good. Uh, Renyas is going to remain unsigned. I probably should sign him because he's 20, but we're almost at the con uh, contract limit as it stands. So I definitely should start moving some like uh, lower potential guys for those low elites um, eventually. But for the time being, I think we're fine with the way the situation is. So if we take a look at the entire main roster team and players who we expect to play on this team, we have Jonathan Drouin, Domi, and Gallagher. So that's three. Kaka, Niemi, Sherbach, and Gord. That is six. Armia, Houdon, and probably Zach Sedishin. That's going to be nine. Lafreniere, Byron, and Cousins is going to be 12. Jacob De La Rose could be an extra forward. Same thing with Ryan Paling. Might be an extra forward. Same thing with Samuel Poulet. So we roughly have about 14, I think, forwards. 14 or 15 forwards. So I really don't think I need any extra forwards for the nhl team i don't need to sign any depth guys on forward i think we're fine by that and then obviously as i said on defense yossi morrissey jules and mete zaboro belfoy clayson maybe as the extra defenseman i think is fine i would like to grab one more guy that i would like to be comfortable with other than that everything i think is pretty good for the time being for uh, defense and then goaltenders we'll get to that in a minute speaking of goaltenders i think i might have found a suitable trading asset for one carry price. Now, here's what I'm thinking for carry price. Well, first off, let me guys show you what free agency is looking like in the goaltender department. As you guys will see, it's kind of stacked with a lot of attendees. You have John Gillies here who wants like seven years, 81 overall. Apparently, this guy is like a massive, crazy high overall goaltender at this point. I don't know why Calgary is not... Didn't want to re-sign him, but for whatever reason, he's available and he's a crazy high overall. Tuka Rask is available. Dubnik, Ranta, Talbot, Grubauer, Anderson, Varlama, Bernier, Reimer, Markstrom, like Subban, Letton, and Grace. Like, there's a lot of really good goaltenders available in free agency this year in year number four. And a lot of teams need goaltenders. So a lot of, a lot of good teams are definitely going to be reaching out to these tendies to try to sign contracts uh, to them for their teams. But... There's also the option of trading for a goaltender, and I think that's what we're going to do because all those goaltenders are available for free agency to sign. Not every team is going to be able to grab or sign a goaltender money-wise to get. So why not trade carry Price and then go out and sign one of those other goaltenders because I have a ton of cap room and available to make a trade, and I think we might be able to swing a deal 
draft here. We reacquired our medium elite goaltender prospect in this past draft as well. So we pick up where we left off with uh, Vorobiev. We just have to see what kind of overall that guy's going to be looking like to see how close he's actually going to be. But Carter Hart looks to be maybe the starter if he's not ready. More than likely the backup. But I think it's time to let Carey Price go. Now the problem with our team that I have seen the past couple of years we need that bona fide goal scorer on the team we need somebody that's going to be able to put the puck in the back of the net and we need them to do that frequently now i know a lot of you guys wanted to say make sure to get like a goaltender prospect in return for carry price i don't really need one with the amount of goaltenders that are available in free agency to sign as well as carter hart being on my team and the really good goaltender that i drafted i don't see a need to pick up a goaltender prospect in a trade with Carey Price, I think it's time for us to finally start trying to acquire roster players. And when I'm thinking of a roster player, I need somebody that can score freaking goals. That's why out of all the teams I've searched that have looked, you know, I'm looking to trade Carey Price to a Western Conference team so that he will not bother me at all. That's what brought me to the Colorado Avalanche. As far as top tier players go on the Colorado Avalanche, I can't get Nathan McKinnon. There's absolutely no way that's going to get done. I can't get Miko Rantanen. Absolutely no way that's going to get done. Don't know why Sven Ghetto's overall is that high. I doubt it's actually accurate for whatever reason. Switch out the forwards real quick. And then Alexander Kerfoot would be a nice guy, player to grab. He's only 26, but not the type of player I'm looking for. I want a player that's going to be able to put the puck in the back of the net. Tyson Jost has been putting the puck in the back of the net. And that's somebody I want to acquire for this team. Tyson Jost's stats for the past couple of years have been really, really phenomenal. In year number three, he put up 33 goals, 20 assists, and 53 points. And the year before that, 23 goals, 16 assists, 39 points. He can get assists, and he can get goals. He only played two games the year before that as well. And he scored two goals in two games, three total points. This guy can put the puck in the back of the net. He takes a ton of shots, 297 total shots for the Colorado Avalanche last year. That's a lot if you compare him to like other players, like Kerfoot, for instance, only took 119 shots. Even if you compare that to like Miko Rantanen and Nathan McKinnon, he took more shots than Miko Rantanen did. He took way more shots than Nathan McKinnon did last year and scored the exact same amount of goals as Nathan McKinnon does. Obviously, Nathan McKinnon is a star player. Didn't have the greatest year last year, only 62 points, but I think the Avs struggled last year, if I remember correctly. And we have his trade value exactly scouted to what I want. And if if he can, he has got a great contract too, honestly. Three mil for three more years, and he's only 23. That's a perfect player to get for my team on that second line, especially since that Max Domi will be playing the second line or just Barry Kakanyemi, depending on his overall boost. Kakanyemi more than likely will go to the first. Domi will move to the second, so I'll have Jost that can score goals. Domi will be a playmaker. Sherback's also a playmaker. Jost might be that two-way forward, but if he can put pucks in the back of the net, who cares what his player type is? I want him to score goals, and he can. So Tyson Jost will be added to this block in a trade for carry price and i'm also going to add in a first round pick even though they don't want to trade it i'm going to add that in and then this last piece i'm not really sure what else i could grab to be perfectly honest um like a forward prospect wouldn't be terrible i don't know if there's anybody else who i could like particularly grab from this team uh like i'm not going to be able to get philip greer who's like a 19th overall pick uh comfer i don't really particularly want forward wise nobody else is really speaking to me all too crazy yeah nobody else really on forward and then defensive prospect wise uh, no you know there's not really anybody too great other than samuel gerard who i was thinking about adding to this list i mean he could content potentially continue to grow he's only 23 as well so I might try to add just Samuel Gerrard to this trade as well, just to see if it might go through. I don't think it will. I think it's going to push it a little bit too much over the edge, but I think I'll just add him to the deal for right now to see if that would go through. Now, Montreal will have more than 45 skaters in the organization, which makes sense. So if I'm sending you guys Gerrard, I'll send you guys back somebody else who I'm not really using. I have a ton of really good forward prospects that uh, I don't need that are signed that I don't really need like a bunch of these medium top nine players down here 
don't need all of them. Um, if I have to give up one, it would probably be a Lofsen. I'm not really all too attached to him particularly. He was a second round pick that we made uh, in our very first year. Not really particularly attached to him all too well, so I would probably give him up. Adds a little bit of trade value to the uh, to the deal. And then if I'm going to give up a Lofsen, a little bit of value to it, I might as well just try to grab a third round pick in addition to this as well. So this is kind of the blockbuster kind of deal I'm hoping to get through for Carey Price. Sending him off to Colorado. Once again, sending him to the Western Conference where he will not bother me. Giving up Jacob Lofsen as well. Getting Tyson Jost. Something we need. We need a goal scorer. He looks to be scoring goals in this in this simulation so i'm not going to question it if he can put up 30 goals i'll be 100 percent happy with that tyson jost a first jump pick maybe samuel gerard maybe a third let's see if this will go through trade rejected value isn't it where it needs to be all right let's take off that third let's take off the third carry price and the lobster for jost a first and samuel gerard will this trade go through Trade rejected, filling his needs, just isn't compared to what they're being asked. Okay, so I'm thinking Samuel Gerrard is kind of the one holding this up at this point. Connor Timmons? Yeah, maybe Connor Timmons instead of Gerrard. I'll take off Gerrard and I'll add Connor Timmons in. He's got a little bit less trade value to him. He's still a prospect as it seems defensive wise so i'll see if maybe that goes through and then maybe i'll add in the draft pick back again since i'm adding in a lower pick i'll add in a third for that all right so price lobson jost a first connor timmons now and a third trade rejected could live is woolly it's sufficient all right once again i'll just take off the third price a lobson jost a first connor timmons Trade rejected, woolly, it's sufficient. All right, you know what? I'll probably just take off the draft pick. I'll just do this straight up. Even if it's definitely in the Colorado Avalanche favor, I'm more than happy with this trade. Price for Jost, a first and a third. I'll end the third again. <laughs> I really want that third. Price straight up for Jost, a first and a third. Trade rejected, no, all right, take off the third. Price for Jost and a first. Trade rejected, Jesus. Give him the Devil's third. Yeah, let's give him the Devil's third. Because I want this deal to go through. Carey Price, Olofsson, and a third round pick for Tyson Jost and a first from Colorado. Trade rejected. Dude, they still don't want this trade to be done. Price is worth a really good player and a first round pick. There's no doubt in my mind that he is worth that. Do I give up the second if I'm going to get another first? Yeah, I could, see, I could do that. And you know what? I'll add an Olofsson as well. It's a lot to give up for this trade, but I think it's fine. Price, my second, which I'm, you know, I'm giving away. If I'm getting a first, I can definitely give away the second and a Lofsen for Jost and a first. Will this go through? Trade rejected still. No, my God. What do I have to do? What if I retain like a million dollars worth of cap on price? They're still not interested in this deal, dude. That's crazy. I think I could do carry price for Tyson Joe straight up, but I think I'll have to get like supplemental picks. I think I'll have to get the second. Here's the thing. If you're going to give me Joe, just Joe, and if I'm not going to get the first, then you're giving me Joe the second and you're going to give me Samuel Gerard then in return. Because if they're not going to do all those things, then you're going to give me Gerard. So price. And a loss for Jost a second and Samuel Gerard. Trade rejected. Still too far off. Move the second down to a third. Price and a loss for Jost, Gerard, and a third. Trade rejected. Still too far off. All right. All right. So Price and a loss now. Jost, Timmons, and a second. Will this go through? Trade accepted. Finally, man. On behalf of the Colorado Avalanche organization, I accept your trade offer. We'll see you out on the ice. So I don't get the first I wanted, and I don't get Gerard, which is fine, because like I said, I don't need him. But Carey Price is now gone, and hopefully I get the goal scorer that I wanted. This, his stats seem to predict that he's going to score goals on this team. And, you know, after the year that he just had, 
I'm hoping that he's going to be a phenomenal addition to our team. And, you know, I'm really hoping that 83 overall continues to grow even higher than what it already is. Because we're not even sure if it's at an 83 overall or not. But if he can put up 23 and 33 goals in back-to-back -back years, and if he can just put continue to put the puck in the back of the net, honestly, I feel like that was a good trade. And Carey Price is no longer on our team. We also picked up Connor Timmons, which is awesome. Uh, another really good kind of defensive prospect for us. So he'll continue to grow down there in the minors. He's only 22, so he'll continue to grow. And we picked up a second round pick, which we can use for this draft. We have two firsts now, ours and Nashville's, and two seconds, Colorado's and ours. We also have two thirds as well, so Dallas and Jersey's. We don't have our third round pick, but we have six picks in the first three rounds which is looking pretty awesome for our team coming this draft we'll have to keep an eye on colorado throughout the year as well but they have carry price which means they don't need a goaltender but we still do need a goaltender added onto this team um contract situation though do i have max contracts or am i at the max contract limit all right i'm at 49 out of 50 good because i need myself a goaltender at least an older goaltender. Now, I'm not going to be getting younger in goaltender for this year. I'm going to go out and try to sign an attendee who's, you know, relatively older. Um, I might have to make another trade to free up another roster spot for an extra depth defenseman. So, I might make that trade eventually as well. So, I'll see if I can trade away one of my better prospects for a pick. Um, Goaltender-wise, who was I looking at potentially grabbing? Honestly, Auntie Ranta kind of hit the nail on the head at somebody who I was looking at grabbing to be honest he's 32 so he's not like crazy old he can still be like a decent mentor for um Carter Hart and he could still help us be somewhat competitive since we already know he is 86 overall uh could drop a little bit but that's you know that's honestly fine that's expected um and honestly the lower that he drops off in lower all really won't matter that much because Carter Hart will be continuing to grow and he might digress into the backup Tendi, and we actually could have a decent one-two punch for a couple of years if we can get Auntie Ranta. So I think I'm going to try to sign him. Pittsburgh and Colorado were also interested, but I doubt that Colorado is still interested in Ranta anymore after making the trade for Carey Price. Plus, I remember, I think they said they had uh, JF Baruby as one of their backup goaltenders, so I don't think yet he's going to be... Uh, looking to join the avalanche team as of now because he wants to be a starter and he can't be a starter in either of those teams so i think for a two-year deal for ranta at like 5.4 mil i think would be more actually i'll go to 5.5 screw it two years at 5.5 mil for auntie ranta i think is more than solid it's 86 overall 32 years old um this is kind of what carrie price would have been at an overall more than likely either midway through this year or at the end of next year he'll once again he'll continue to digress but that's fine because we already have carter hart and honestly the cap is good because we need to eat we need to fill up salary cap we need to get a little bit closer to uh cap for now but i'll send this uh, offer out to auntie ranta and see if he gets back to me so hopefully he will and i feel like that's good that's a good guy to grab a lot of other guys are you know decent a lot of guys in their mid to low 30s are really looking good for goaltenders obviously i'm not going to go out and grab like the crazy high gillies or the rasks or the dubniks talbots grubauers and things like that i'll just go after somebody who i know that i scouted well he's not asking for a shit ton 5.5 i think is more than fair uh how much cap space do i have 23.6 so yeah i definitely need to eat up some cap that's for sure all right so now that that is done i need to free up hopefully a contract spot so let's make sure that we do that yeah, I think like a Michael McCarron can probably go. If any team is interested in McCarron, let's sign him up to St. Louis. They need some, uh, they need some players. I'll just take a draft pick from you guys. Michael McCarron, you were literally the salt of the earth. Uh, seventh round pick. They'll do that. Almost feel guilty saying that. That's fine. I wasn't going to use Michael McCarron anyway. So we free up a roster uh, spot, which is good. And now we can go back into free agency here and sign myself a depth defenseman that I'm going to overpay to all hell and back. Um, if you guys were wondering as well for like forward wise that was available in free agency that wasn't going to go out and grab like Backstrom, Schwartz, Landis Goddard, Teravainen, Skinner, Shen, Nugent Hopkins, players like that, Gensel, Eberle, uh, Kovalchuk, Jesus. Um, yeah, so players like that, as you guys can see, are available in free agency. 84, 83, 82. The Kulikovs were good though. He's 30. Yeah, let's grab Dmitry Kulikov. 
Alright, I will sign you for one year. I will give you a crazy amount of money. Alright, I think that's fair enough for Dmitry Kulikov. Just one year at 10 mil. Obviously, he's just going to sit on the bench, be a depth guy, let him go at the end of the year. But nice to be a fill-in every now and then. So, uh, nice little payday for you right there, Dimitri. Hope that uh, entices you a bit. And then, obviously, we're getting hopefully 5.5 or 5.6 to Ranta, which will lead up 15, which will leave us roughly around, like, 8 mil still available. So, hopefully, that should work out fine for us. So let's advance the dates and let's see if these guys come as Kulikov should hopefully be on my, uh, should not take too long to answer that call. Uh, let's see, Yanni Gord, I forgot, is also on my training block now, uh, for a second and a fourth. I'm gonna say no for right now. Kulikov's taking the sweet all time. Okay, there you go, Kulikov is good. Kulikov's good. Uh, Tamora and a third to the LA Kings for their second. Uh, Tamora was the unsigning guy, the playmaker, no, no thanks. All right, come on. Are we going to get Antti Ranta? Oh, Antti Ranta rejected. He did go to Colorado. Wow. Uh, your roster is full with no room for me anyway. Hailing and Gord to the Blues for a first round pick and a second round pick. Jeez, that's a lot. I'll decline that for right now, though. All right, uh, we need a goalie. Uh, yeah, so they have Carey Price making 9.5. Oh, right, because did I retain cap on uh, Price? I think I did. I forgot to take the retained cap off Carey Price, so... Honestly, that's fine that I'm eating up a mil, so that's fine. Uh, Ronta signed for only 3.7 for three years. I offered him 5.5, and he said no. Wow, so he's going to be the backup. Him and Price, well, they'll kill it in Colorado, that's for sure. But, uh, yeah, that's a lot of money. All right, so we'll just have to see him wait on Simeon Varlamov now, see if he uh, joins the team. A first in Yanni Gord for... <laughs> huh. Huh. That's pretty funny. No, Colorado. No. That's pretty fit hilarious. You, oh, you, I heard you guys wanted uh, Antti Ranta. Varlamovs goes to Minnesota. Okay. Uh, Paling in a third to the Blackhawks for a first. Yeah, Ryan Paling definitely has a lot of trade value to him. Uh, Phil Grubauer rejected. Yeah, it's saying roster full. All right, so let me see. I have to propose a freaking trade again. Um, I'll get rid of a goaltender then. All right, give me the seven, Detroit. Trade accepted. Okay, not gonna look a gift horse in the mouth. Yep, yep, blah, 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 blah. So Primo will play on the AHL team this year. That's fine. So Michael McDiamond's gone. Free agency again. Let's grab our Tendi. Uh, yeah. All right. So let's just go out and grab Grubauer. Like I said, I don't think that uh, it's honestly a bad grab to grab him for four mil. Like I said, I freed up another contract spot, Phillip, so I need you on the squad. Failing in a third for that first again from the Blackhawks. Ward and two thirds for a first and a second. Well, so those are the two round, two third round picks I have. A lot of teams want Yanni Gord. There we go. Offer accepted. Finally. So there we go. So Grubauer's on our team now, which is good. Our contract limit is pretty much full to the brim now. We have 11.7 mil of, con of cap space available. We're retaining 2.3 mil of uh, salary cap, which is from both, I think it's from Weber and Price. So yeah, that was inevitable as it comes to it. So. Phil Grubauer is on our team, and Carter Hart is going to be the goaltender duo this year. It's a little bit weaker than what I expected, but honestly, that's fine. We just need to wait like a couple year or two for Carter Hart to get better. And honestly, this video took a very, very long time, and uh, I think I'm just going to sim. Actually, I'm going to wait, because a lot of teams are definitely making offers for trades of Yanni Gord and things like that, so I think I might uh, hold off on this video again. And uh, next video, we'll send to the next season, and then we'll get started. Uh, maybe you guys can let me know about those trades. Should Yanni Gord go, potentially? I don't know. You guys can let me know. I, know you, I mean, I showed you pretty much everybody who was on our team forward-wise who might be filling it out on the team. Is Yanni Gord an expendable member of our team now, considering that uh, if we look at overalls and compare to a bunch of those guys like Duran Kakaniemi, Domi, Gallagher, Sherback. We picked up Tyson Jost now. Do we really need Yanni Gord anymore as a result of that? Because we got Jost for the second line. And I don't think Gord is going to be remaining on this team because all the prospects are probably going to be filling out the lineup as well. So who knows if he's expendable or not. Uh, if, if he's not, I can trade him. And he'll probably get me a sweet deal in return. As you guys were seeing, a lot of teams were offering... A lot of good stuff for Yanni Gord, so you can let me know in the comments down below if we trade that. But, yeah, 
Price is no longer here, boys. I know a lot of people didn't want that, but I think getting Tyson Jost is, is something that I wanted. I told you guys this many times. I need somebody on this team that can score goals. Tyson Jost is going to be able to score goals for us on our team. So hopefully he will be able to get that done. The only thing that we are still missing is that strictly offensive defenseman now for the back end. So maybe we can move Gord for somebody like that. Uh, maybe we can give up a couple of the really good prospects that we have. Maybe like a Mete, a Zaboral, or a Juleson. Give up one of those guys in order to make the defense a little bit better and get that offensive defenseman that we need because we already have the two-way. We already have the stud uh, up-and-coming defensive defenseman. So we need that offensive guy that's going to be able to help out our defense and give us points. So let me know down below if there's any potential players or suggestions that you could think of to grab an offensive defenseman you can let me know other than that i think we're going to call it here a long episode here just kind of muddling around in free agency making some trades showing you guys what i did and attempting to sign players but other than that i think we're good so thank you guys for watching if you did enjoy make sure to leave a like comment subscribe as always next video we will get started with year number four obviously preseason and all that fun stuff getting our players ready we'll take it only like the first couple of weeks in or maybe a month just to figure out overalls and then we'll figure out where everybody should be playing with the team. So, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.